morning, everyone. I'm Dandi from the from the hardware development team. So I have been working here for two months and a half. So this is kind of one of my old research what I did when I was staying at university, uh, university Tokyo Institute of Technology. So this is a uh, research which is uh, the hardware developer to generate the processor in a very quick time for low power application. So this is kind of outline of today's presentation. First I will give an overview of the proposed technique and there are some proposed architecture. Uh, how can we synthesize the processor, experimental results and finally conclude the talk. So let's start with the overview. So usually when we do like software development, we write an uh, application or like some software compiled with our GCC or other compiler generated and like we do, do kind of profiling to find out that where we can further optimize the software. But what happens if we take, it, take the report as a thing for developing the software? So we can use it like for example, we have a processor generation framework which is the pro process.c and we can configure it according to the report which we obtain from the software analysis from and then we have a, our RTL generator which is the very low level code generation from the high level code and then we can generate it like for different backend for example FPGA or for custom ASIC and other things. So this is kind of brief overview of this uh, of this work. So we will able to take uh, any uh, application and generate customizable processor only for that application. So the processor architecture, like in in this framework, we use a generic processor architecture where we have a host processor which is on the left hand side, and there is a sublet coprocessor. The sublet coprocessor is basically used for the keep the functionality when we tailor the processor for host processor for particular application, and we will have a memory. So the comp, uh, co co yeah. So and there are several interfaces between the coprocessor, host processor, and memory. So just to transfer the data among different module of the architecture. The memory map of this one is very simple because like the target of this processor is to use for low power application, not with really high performance computing or other stuff. So we use a one memory where we will have a MIPS program, so which is the generated by the compiler, and a sublet memory, which is the uh, memory for the uh, sublet coprocessor, and also we have register file. So we want to reduce the power consumption, and we found that when we have register file in a processor, it increases the size, and at the same time, it will increase the power consumption. So that is that's the main motivation for this work to include everything on the same memory. And uh, the mixed processor is something like that, where we have a stack data text, and like it's just conventional things. And uh, we have a sublet routine and sublet memory. So the sublet routine is basically a set of instruction to perform any computation, and we also have to store the intermediate data of the sublet uh, computation. So the host processor is something like that, which is a non-pipeline processor, and every instruction takes four clock cycles, not, not like usual uh, processor which can perform each instruction in F one clock cycle. And uh, other things we include in this processor, which is the program counter, instruction decoder, ALU, we perform arithmetic logic and sheet operation and some control interface, control and interface. So there are several interface between the program memory and uh, also with the coprocessor and something like that, the interface. And the sublet coprocessor is something like that where we have a program counter and the subtractor only and there is a control unit. And uh, we also have some interface between host and memory. So we pick this one as a one instruction set computer, which is like subtract and branch if the difference is less than zero. So it's a Turing complete instruction, and you can perform any computation on using that. Like it's just adding a sequence of instructions. 
So, like, first we look at the sublet core processor, what is actually it is. So, it comprises of three memory locations. So, example is sublet A, B, C. So, A, B, C are the three instructions, uh, memory locations. So, A and B are the memory location for source 1 and source 2, and C is the jump address, where do we want to go. So, to perform this operation, we need this kind of uh, behavior. Like, first we get the memory at memory value of B and then subtract from memory value A and put it in back to that. If the difference between difference of result is less than zero, then we will jump to the C, otherwise we will increase to the next program counter, which is like program counter three. So as we have three uh, memory location, we need to jump to the next address. And how can we perform a simple add operation in, a, in using sublet routine? So this is uh, the add operation. So first we have uh, sub SRC, sublet SRC. SRC1 is the memory location of source 1, and Z is a zero register. So first we perform Z minus SRC1. So we will have Z is equal to minus SRC1. Then we perform Z is, is equal to Z minus SRC2. So we already have minus SRC1, so we added like SRC2 onto the same uh, result. Then we clear the destination register, which is specify the register, and then we shift the uh, Z register into the uh, destination register. So to perform that, we like the de destination. Uh, oh, so sorry, this this should be C, not SRC2. So and finally, we need to clear the register like C register for next operation if we want to perform add operation again. So we can see that like it takes many cycles, like for example, five cycles, five instructions to perform this one. And each operation, each instruction in sublet computer, we need uh, like five, uh, five clock cycles. So it's like 25 clock cycles, so it's a lot. So right now, the available sublet routines, like when I did working at that time, we had uh, addition and subtraction, also we had shift operation, like depending on the application, and conditional branches, and uh, multiplication. So, but the, the professor I was working with, she still continued the research, and I think by this time, she already finished all the mixed instruction. So, you can use it like as a full-page processor. So, now let's look how can we synthesize the processor. So we can uh, synthesize the processor in two different modes, like one is host only, and another one is host with coprocessor. So when we have a host processor only, in that case, all the functionality gonna be inside the host processor, not on the sublet processor. And coprocessor can be removed just before synthesis the processor. And in case of uh, coprocessor, with coprocessor, we can add limited functionality at the host processor and move moves some instruction to perform on the sublet coprocessor. So the execution flow of the processor is something like that. The, on the left hand side, the host processor only, where we fetch the instruction <coughs> from the program memory, decode uh, the instruction, execute the native MIPS instruction, and output, we put the output on the memory and we update the PC. But when we have the host processor, so we face the instruction, decode the instruction, and we check that is the instruction is available on the host processor or not. If it's not available, then we can uh, perform it on the sublet coprocessor, and we get the result back to and put it in the memory as as usual. So let's uh, see, like for example, sublet coprocessor. We, in this one, it's only a host processor, and we want to remove the sublet coprocessor. So in that case, like we remove the sublet coprocessor, and this is the host processor where we have a uh, coprocessor interface. As we want to remove the coprocessor, we don't need this interface, so it's kind of reducing the circuit area of the overall architecture. And also, when we want to uh, generate copro with coprocessor, in that case, for example, here we want do not want to add the shift oper operation, so we and then we can move it, move, perform the shift operation. So we, it's completely depend on the application, what we want to achieve and what we want to minim how we want to minimize the power and other things. So let's look at the result. So for this result, we use uh, 
Altera Fuadas do and uh, Cyclone to FPGA, so it's very old FPGA. And uh, we try different applications from media, sort, search, security. And uh, the performance we compare is like area and Fmax, so maximum frequency, synthesis frequency. And also we calculate area and delay product, so which is very useful when we want to compare against other things, for example, area and uh, delay. So, and uh, power is one of the main issue for this one, so we also add. And uh, we uh, add different processor variant. First one is host only, so we will have only host processor performing all the instruction. And M sublet, only the multiplication is moved into the sublet core processor. And uh, uh, MS plus sublet, so it is like multiplication, sublet, and shift operation, uh, subtraction and shift operations. And finally, we have all sublets, so also addition operation. And perform on the sublet. So there is uh, the host processor is only used for performing decoding and other tasks. And we compare against a 32-bit pipeline processor, which is an open source pipeline processor from University of Cambridge. So if we look at the area and frequency graph, the bar shows the frequency of the processors, and uh, the circuit area is the line. So if we look at the whole, like when we move the mode instruction into the sublet, we can achieve higher frequency, and at the same time, we can reduce the circuit area. On the other hand, like pipeline is like is very, like how to say, operating at very low frequency on the right hand side, and also the power uh, frequency uh, circuit area is also very large. So. And uh, also later we calculate the area delay product. And uh, so when we add more instruction, uh, in that case, like more, it takes longer time to perform on the sublet. So as a result, we cannot get very good result. But also we already have. We need to consider the circuit area. And if we look at the power consumption here, so the power consumption is getting down. On the other hand, pipeline processor has a very high power consumption. So, uh, almost 75% of uh, power savings. But uh, to perform all operation on the sublet is not the main task or main motivation of this work. So we need to find out where we want to apply, uh, like customize the processor. So for that, like we pick three. Uh, benchmark. So first one is a DCT function, discrete cosine, and the second one is CRC, like is commonly used for encryption and encryption error, error correcting code, and MPAC also for video processing. So if we look at the left hand side, the DCT function basically is a good mix of different kind of instruction. And in case of CRC, we have uh, mostly adder and shift operation. And in case of impact, mo most of the operations are related to adder and uh, memory access. So in that, if we do that, and we, in, in case of J, like DCT function, we can see that like when we add more sublet instructions, the area, area delay product is getting higher just because it takes long time. And uh, in case of CRC, we can see that like we move this one, like multiplication is not necessary, so we can get very good result. And in case of impact, we have very good result, like even smaller than pipeline processor source. So in the conclusion, we can say that like the, this framework is really efficient when we want to customize. And nowadays, like uh, the processor, like we don't have enough time to generate hardware, so we have to do it very quickly. <coughs> And uh, developing hardware takes long time, so if we have this kind of, we can make it very efficiently and very quickly. And uh, yeah, so in the future, like we are also planning to use like different kind of uh, instructions. That right now only mix, but it is possible to use like ARM, DSP, and other instructions that architecture. And right now, basically, I'm working on extending it to a mini core architecture. So hopefully, I can finish it before PFM day. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
So if I understood correctly, basically you came up with a, a specialized chip that could handle some specific tasks. Is that correct? Yeah, so we can generate this one. Like, if we can make a specialized processor only for a, applica a specific application. Right, so my understanding is that basically as we're hitting sort of the edge of Moore's law, that the yeah. doubling is getting more and more difficult due to the, yeah. the, the transistor size. Yeah, of course, like, at that point, we cannot just increase the size or speed up. So we need to find out some alternative way to reduce the circuit area and also like, and if we consider about the IoT devices, like where we have very low power, so for example, a sensor node, you just display it onto a remote location and with some minimum amount of battery. So you have to operate the processor at very low power. So that is kind of very useful when you consider that. Doesn't the higher frequency use more power? Yeah. Okay, so you're trying to lower the frequency. Yeah. And also, like when we have larger circuit area, it means like sometimes we don't use all the resources for some operations, but still it consumes power. So yeah. we have to find out some like point where we can do it. Yeah, still we have four or five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if not, okay.